the most important thing to be able to do with a sequence is to find its limit, if it exists. We're going to do these seven examples of looking at a sequence and finding its limit if it exists. This video has chapters, so you can skip around the problems as you please. Let's begin with problem one. So here we are looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of a polynomial, n, divided by this other polynomial, 3n plus 1. You should know that if you're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of two polynomials that have the same degree, like they do in this case, this has degree 1, the denominator also has degree 1, the limit at infinity is just going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients, that is 1 over 3. And we can show that formally by dividing both the numerator and denominator by that highest power of n. If we divide the numerator by n, which is the highest power, and we divide the denominator by n, again the highest power, what we get is this. In the numerator, n divided by n is 1, and in the denominator, 3n divided by n is 3, and 1 divided by n is 1 over n. Then we see as n goes to infinity, 1 over n will go to 0, and thus we'll be left only with 1 over 3, and so the limit is 1 third. Again, if you have a ratio of polynomials of the same degree, the limit at infinity is just the ratio of the leading coefficients. Here is our second problem, 1 minus 0 0.3 to the n. When we take the limit of this as n goes to infinity, the 1 is not affected at all because it doesn't have an n, and all we really have to worry about is that 0.3 to the power of n. So let's look at that. So the limit of the terms of this sequence will be 1 minus the limit of 0.3 to the n as n goes to infinity. Now you have to know, because this is a number whose magnitude is less than 1, when we raise it to the power of n, as n goes to infinity, it's going to get arbitrarily small. This is 3 tenths. 3 tenths of something will only make it smaller. So when we raise this to an arbitrarily large power, it will get arbitrarily small. Hence, it will approach zero. Anytime you have some number raised to what we might informally call an infinite power, if that number has a magnitude less than one, it's going to approach zero. So this is just one minus zero, that's what it's approaching, which is of course one. That's the limit of this sequence. It will never quite get there, but it will get arbitrarily close. And again, if this number was something else like 1.3 to the n, then instead of getting arbitrarily small, it would get arbitrarily large. But its magnitude is less than one, it's 0.3, so it does get arbitrarily small. Here's the third example, n cubed over n squared plus 1. This looks a little bit like the first example because we have a ratio of two polynomials, but they don't have the same degree. The degree of the numerator is 3, and the degree of the denominator is 2. So really what's going to happen here is the numerator is going to get arbitrarily large more quickly than the denominator. The limit doesn't exist, the sequence just diverges to infinity. However, we can see that in a little bit more simple terms if, again, we divide by the highest power of n. So we could divide the numerator by n cubed and divide the denominator by n cubed. Again, because that's the highest power of n present in this expression. If we do that, n cubed divided by n cubed is 1, and then in the denominator, n squared divided by n cubed is 1 over n. 1 over n cubed is 1 over n cubed we see as n goes to infinity, both terms in the denominator approach 0, while the numerator is just fixed at 1. So it's like 1 over 0. We see that's why it is going to positive infinity. There's nothing negative here, so it's going to positive infinity. The limit does not exist. Number 4, here's a cute example. 4 to the n plus 3 over 5n. So let's look at the limit of this as n goes to infinity. First thing we should notice is that 4 and 5 pretty much have the same power. 4 just has this plus 3 in its power that the 5 doesn't have. But this plus 3 is just 3 additional factors of 4. So let's just take those 3 additional factors of 4 out of the limit since they're not being affected by n. So taking those 3 factors of 4 out, Inside the limit, we're left with 4 to the n 
divided by 5 to the n, which we can rewrite with just a single power as 4 over 5 to the power of n. Now, this is just like the point 0.3 to the power of n that we were looking at. We have a number whose magnitude is less than 1 being raised to what we may informally call an infinite power. Every time you multiply by 4 fifths, the number gets smaller, so this is going to get arbitrarily small and go to 0. Thus, the limit is 4 to the power of 3 times 0, which is zero. So this is a convergent sequence. Its limit is zero. In problem number five, we're looking at the sequence whose terms are e to the one over n. Now the limit of e to the one over n is the same as e to the power of the limit of one over n as n goes to infinity because the exponential function is continuous. So we can just move the limit into the exponent since it's only affecting the exponent. That's the only thing with an n. But then it's clear the limit of one over n as n goes to infinity is zero. So this is just e to the zero, which is one. So the limit of this sequence is one. It converges to one. Problem six, we're looking at the sequence cosine of n over two. The limit of cosine of n over two as n goes to infinity, you may not be surprised to know it does not exist. Of course, cosine is an oscillating function. And so as n grows arbitrarily here, the terms of our sequence are just going to oscillate. If there was a 2 pi next to this n so that every increase in n just skipped us forward a whole period, then it would be possible for a sequence like this to converge if it was just taking on constant values. But in this case, that's not happening. So indeed, this limit does not exist. Finally, problem seven, we're looking at the sequence sine of two over n. Here we see another way that a limit of a trig sequence could exist. In this case, n is in the denominator. So as n gets infinitely large, the input two over n is going to get arbitrarily small. It will be approaching zero. Sine is a continuous function, so we can move the limit right inside and say this is equal to sine of the limit of two over n as n goes to infinity. Like we said, two over n is going to get arbitrarily small as n goes to infinity. So this is sine of zero, which we know to be zero. So the limit of this sequence is zero. If you want some more sequence limit problems, including ones that require L'Hopital's rule and the squeeze theorem, consider supporting Wrath of Math by joining as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive videos and extra practice, including a video where we solve six more sequence limit problems. And if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 2 course and Calculus 2 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.